happy or not, all the subjects in your book are successful comedy writers. I would say by and large. You know, there are plenty of ineffectual, doomed comedy writers out there who will never amount to jack squat. But there's a lot. Where's their, went, moment? Where's their moment in the sun? Where's their chapter in your book, Mike? Not in my book. <laughs> well, what if I told you that I had just the kind of unsuccessful young comedy writer here tonight. Oh, boy. He's on my writing staff. He wrote those wedding jokes. <laughs> what if I brought him out here for an interview and uh, balance the scale a little bit? What do you say? You usually do a little more preparation, but I, I'd be up for well, it. Well, I prepared it for you. I'll introduce him. You can take over. I've got some questions here you can ask him. <laughs> there you go. Those are for you. Thank you. All right. All right, so here's the introduction for... Uh, <laughs> for this next gentleman. A few people have accomplished less in the history of written, in the history of written or performative comedy than Jesse Goldfarb. At 26 years old, he's already dropped out of four unpaid internships at online comedy magazines, been fired from PA positions at Saturday Night Live, The Daily Show, and Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, bombed at countless open mics throughout Manhattan and Brooklyn. And as of this morning, he's wrapped recording on the first episode of his new character-based, long-form improv podcast. It is the third podcast he started in the past six months. Please welcome Jesse Goldfarb. This guy's a real deal. He's Mike, a true oh fuck up. Mike, he's all yours. This is, this is yours. tremendous. You guys know that classic joke, how do you get to Littlefield? Practice, practice, our train. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your name is Je Jesse. I'm going to begin this interview. How did you get started on your path into comedy writing? Oh, wow. Great question. I feel like, oh, I don't want to say like I was born to do it, but like, I'm not going to be a doctor. <laughs> so why not? You know, why not? And people, everyone's always like, you gotta be joking. <laughs> like when I'm around. So I figured, yeah, maybe, maybe I am joking. <laughs> so like, it's just a tremendous opportunity. The Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. Oh, I love those guys. <laughs> has become sort of a finishing school for many college graduates seeking a career in comedy. Let me ask you, Jesse, how important was the UCB in your development? I mean, you, you can't measure it. It was so big, and I never went there <laughs> because it was like, no, I'm not going to take classes. One day, I'm going to be classes. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. How do you get to UCB? <laughs> practice, practice. E-Train. Oh, so it's the E-Train now. Yeah, he's been there. <laughs> Is it true that in 2011 you were fired from an unpaid internship? That is not true. I got paid in bagels in the morning. They gave us very nice. There was butter and cream cheese. We asked for the cream cheese. They acquiesced. Um, and you know, it was, a lot of people ask me, Jesse, how did you get a gig putting videos of corgis up on comedy.com? <laughs> I know, it's a dream. Uh, but you know what, you know what? You just gotta put your head down. You gotta put your head down, you gotta do your work, you gotta practice, practice, and that was the end to 34th Street Herald Square. <laughs> was where those offices were. And I was not fired. Uh, the boss just said, that chair could be put to better use. So, it was, it was more of like a downsizing. What were your influences to become a mediocre comedy writer? Oh my God. Um, just everyday life. Like you walking down the street and you, uh, you see like a bus and, a, and, it goes, and it goes too fast. And you're like, wait a minute. There's something weird about that. And so you, you go home, right? And you think about it for a couple days. And then, uh, and then you let that one go. Because sometimes it's the biggest fish that you just gotta say, bye fish. It wasn't our time yet. And also Big Bang Theory. I love that show, because it's like, it's funny. But also there's a lot of science, so you're learning. It's tremendous, it's a tremendous show. You're laughing and learning. You're laughing and learning. It's, it's, doing, it's doing double time. And that's why I like this guy. 
How important is Twitter in the life of a struggling, futureless comedy? <laughs> Twitter, Twitter changed the game, you know? Because before Twitter, you'd need, uh, like, a resume. Now, with Twitter, you can say you're a comedian, and you put a picture of, like, you holding a mic at Littlefields, and then you are a comedian. And it just, it cuts out the middle, Matt. Do I need to still be working at comedy.com? No, because I could talk to all 98 of my followers directly on Twitter. Practice, practice. Get a Wi-Fi connection from, the, from your local deli. Those right. things are really expensive. I like to end this interview with this question. This one knows. Wait, they know. What advice do you have for aspiring comedy writers who are just starting out today? The, the young comedy writers. It's like, get out of the game. Because uh, it's crowded out here. And like, don't worry about it. We got this. So go be, go be a doctor. You know? The Jesse, world needs more doctors. Continued non-success. I wish you well. Thank you so much. This has been great. Jesse Goldfarb. And Mike Sachs.